Welcome back to uh, part two of Enterprise MathWorks with Anna Gunther. Uh, now we're going to have a presentation with Noah. All right, Noah. Oh, yes. So, um, yes, I'm Noah Young, and uh, my general idea for what I want to put on Pledge Me is um, a company that me and a few of my friends tried to start a wee while ago, and we're still looking into the idea of it. Basically, our company name is Earth's Apparel, and the concept that we're going with is um, a organic clothing brand, so all natural resources, New Zealand made, with New Zealand designs from New Zealand artists. And then what we want to do to make it a little bit different is for every item of clothing, t-shirt, jewellery, pants, jacket, whatever, it has a certain value to it. So say, this shirt is valued at 12, and that relates directly to the number of trees we're going to plant. So we've found tree planting companies, some of them are based in Australia where um, in areas that have been affected by bushfires and stuff like that. So the whole concept of it, well my personal goal is to get to a point where I can say I've planted a million trees. So that's sort of the idea of it. But then I started looking into New Zealand art and like the different styles how we have in tattoo artists and stuff like that. And I realised why limit myself to my own sort of company and my own friends and my own talent and then I started thinking of I wanted to build a group or a community online called Earth's Team where anyone is welcome to send me or send us um, their drawings or their designs for a t-shirt or a post or anything and then we can offer them a commission based on the sales and we can offer them you know, our ideas so I want the clothing brand itself to be extremely collaboration limit um, based so the general idea is that once it, you're a part of that general community you're not only getting commission for that, but you have access to other artists in New Zealand's content where you can send them request ideas saying, I like this t-shirt you did in May, I did this t-shirt in June, why don't we make them together and do our own sort of concept where we can work on our own designs. And sort of just develop it hugely around the community. And then another idea I want to do is very limited stock. So there will only be say 100 of each t-shirt design, so they become almost a collectible. And then I wanted to play with that with the pledges saying, every month or whatever, or every week, if you pledge this amount, you get a certain t-shirt and that's the only way you can get that t-shirt. So then two or three years down the line, hopefully if the companies became big and we've planted our million trees and we're going on to our two million trees, um, then that shirt's going to be a one of a kind limited edition where there's only six in New Zealand or six in the world. So the real concept is, the reason I'm so interested in crowdfunding this idea is because if I get funding from, I'm assuming, mainly New Zealand artists and, New Ze and people who are interested in New Zealand art, they're almost funding themselves because we're just going to be working as a sort of canvas for them to paint on so they can shape the, country, the company and then produce it back. So that's generally the idea. I'm sorry I didn't have a PowerPoint. I um, broke my tablet which had all my designs for my clothes on. <laughs> so, unlucky. Take a seat. Um, right now I was thinking about just doing it project based, so a lot of the initial funding for it would be going to the printing, obviously the fabrics and labour and stuff on first getting the clothing out and then just doing it sort of project by project if it's, if there isn't a consistent income and it's not fully established going, you know, posting up a, no, a new project on Pledge Me saying who would like to see this artist collaborate with this artist to make this clothing under a apparel sort of thing? And that would be the general idea. So how, do you know how much you'd need for that first one or is it just um, project by project? It's just general concept. At the moment I haven't actually crunched too many numbers. Yeah. I was originally looking into printing my own shirts and us doing it all ourselves, but um, unfortunately they cost about 20 grand just to buy one little <laughs> printer I figured. So we're looking at um, you know, third parties to do the printing for us and stuff like that. And originally we were looking at um, going over to China because I know some people who actually work for printing companies in China. But then I really liked the idea of having a made in New Zealand sticker on <laughs> the clothing instead. Yeah. Where is the where is the technology place? So you're 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 not only looking to, I mean, to to build this. It's 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 a website that's going to to match artists with people that are interested in. 
the particular clothing and yeah in a in a sense i wanted to make it again sticking to the idea of everything being limited is so to become in this community you'd be sort of an invite base or you could send us some of your work we'd look through go yes we want this we'll put you in it we're happy to put our brand behind this and then once people are in there then it works as a social network where they can instantly look through other people's stuff and go I'd actually really like to work with this guy. And it doesn't necessarily have to be t-shirts. You know, it could be painters going, actually, I'd really like to, to work with you, or just anything, really. I'm just, the general idea is more just a free-flowing thing where everyone can work together, you know, you know, to get their names out of there, develop New Zealand arts, and obviously help a little bit for the environment while we're doing it. I really like that you um, said that you not only want to crowdsource it, but you want to pay the people either a commission or something, because we see a lot with crowdsourcing that people are making artists do it for free for exposure, and that's really bad, because um, they never get paid. So actually having that in there is really good, and I think that a lot of the artists that we see coming through would really appreciate that. Um, I also liked what you were saying around the collabing because we see that a lot as well where a lot of artists are going and doing a collab with other artists, especially sort of street art where they just sit down and do a drink and draw and build beautiful things. So that's a really good angle. I think the thing with crowdsourcing is you just need to figure out how you manage it in a way that actually turns into something. So it's just a point, but no, it, it sounds like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but interesting. <clears throat> to me, it sounds. I have to to, to reiterate that. I, I think that it's there's a lot uh, to unpack in what you what you presented, and and I think that it's that it's Im important that you as an entrepreneur that that, that you um, you start with with a with a really specific idea, and and then and then before you start adding on and adding on. Um, that you that you get validation at each step, um, and that's the nice thing with crowdfunding is that you can say, "Listen, we're interested in doing this first step, <clears throat> and we only need a thousand dollars for it or fifteen hundred dollars for it to get validation." And if you get market validation from that, perfect. Then you're going to go to the next step, and and that's just adding, adding, and adding it on. Um, I, there's a lot to, to like about what you said. Mm -hmm. I like the I like the social enterprise aspect of it. I like the made in New Zealand aspect. Um, sharing with the artist, I think there's a lot to do there. Um, the technology side of that, I mean, you're you're looking at a fair chunk of change to, to put this together. I mm. think he could do it first without the technology aspect. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I think um, you're but right. Then where you get the validation. You can do that without the technology. Yeah, and, yeah. Keep it simple first, and see how people react to it, and then build it from there. Mm. Feedback, so, hey. So, like, start mm. developing it almost as just. Um, sorry, to start developing it almost just as, say, Earth's Apparel with the original clothing concept, and then if that picks up, then implement the idea of a social media and bringing more people into the idea. What you say? Or even just, even just hacking that social media aspect. I mean. You could do it over Twitter, find artists that want to collab and start sourcing them and getting them on board. Like I think that often people go straight to building technology when there's a lot of different hacks that you can do to get the same sort of feel, if not perfect, you know, but figure it out. Mm. I'm trying to distill the poetry of what this is about. Uh, it seems to be uh, limited edition, fine art prints but the prints are on organic clothing. Does that summarise it? Yeah, more or less. The, um, that was the initial idea, but I didn't want to... Again, this is me rambling on to all these different ideas instead of just mm. focusing on one thing. But I didn't want to only limit it to um, like T-shirts. I also wanted to look into doing, like, say, jewellery lines or mm. you know, printed canvases that you could mm. throw on your wall sort of thing. Yeah. And just sort of like just general art as a medium mm. and using that for a greater purpose if you wanted to look at it that way sort of thing. Mm. It's good to have a big vision though. like you need to know where you want to be in 10 years so having that and just distilling it down to what you want to do right now um, I know a lot of people like you so if you want to know other people like you there's quite a few of you in Auckland who are doing mm. massive things but yeah just figuring out that one step first mm. is really important. Mm. We, we used when we first launched the innovation and entrepreneurship 
course at Massey, uh, one of our poster entrepreneurs was an entrepreneur that was using the new uh, printing technology at the time, this is about 15 years ago, to uh, print extremely high quality images onto silk ties. And then he would just roll up these silk ties and put them in a very flash bit of a box. Uh, but, but that was what his business was, high quality um, silk ties, but super high quality printing, almost a short production runs. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you're thinking mm. 10 steps of product diversification <laughs> in terms of beyond ties into t-shirts, into dresses, into all this. But you, you just need to unfold one, one by one. Mm -hmm. and, and the crowd, I think, to some extent, will give you an insight as to what the, the first few steps mm. are. And you just emerge it from there. Yeah. yeah. We've had a few examples, um, just as a side note, of people doing that, where we had an event um, creator up in Auckland who's done three or four events through Pledge Me Now, and that's her just validating that people are going to come, and there's sort of different concepts like, you know, a gig on a boat or, you know, all these different things, and really what she does is she validates with her crowd for each event, and that's how she does it, and it, they're, not, um, they're not related, but they sort of have grown on each other because she sees the same people coming through and pledging again but more. Mm -hmm. So thinking about it that way as well, like it's not just you crowdfund once and then you're done, like you can build a following around it. So it could, could be the way that you validate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Dragon's Den thing now. Well, I'm in. Are you in? <laughs> I, I could be in. Yeah. What's the valuation? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll give you a chance to ask some questions. Any more questions that you've got for um, Anna? I'm a bit stuck, really. You kind of covered it with your um, lecture at the beginning. Sorry. Oh, no complaints. You mentioned trees. Well, um, could you explain further what the tree concept was? You mentioned millions of trees you'd like to have. I'm just curious how the that... Original, sort of the original thing that sparked this idea was... Um, I read a picture on Facebook, which is a really horrible way to start an idea, but it worked. Um, and I read this thing that said a fully matured tree that was about 50 years old or something would produce enough oxygen in one season that 10 people would consume in one year. So I sort of looked at it that way. And then I've sort of, then it almost brought me back because I went off this little tangent as I do with like my different thoughts of when I was a kid and I used to really care about animals to the point where I'd go on fishing trips with my brother and my dad just to tell them off for catching fish. And then I realised I'm catching fish now, so I sort of thought I'd better do something else to counteract that. So, um, yeah, and then I just thought about how simple it would be, because to plant a tree is actually not that expensive. And, I mean, if you can back it with, you know, a few dollars off each sale and you can build a business out of contributing to, obviously, oh, great green country we have, then I don't see what was stopping me really and that was the main reason I've sort of wanted to start a clothing company was to um, yeah, you know, achieve something or even look at it. I mean, trees was my first idea but then I was very limitedly looking at other stuff like has anyone heard of um, One Face watches? It's a watch company and they have um, $40 watches, each is a different colour and there's stuff like this watch will plant two wells in this village in Africa or this, this watch will help fund treatment for a cancer patient. So you sort of pick your design and go, I want this one because it'll support this charity and it'll help this way. So you sort of choose how you're helping the world through the watch. And so I, was, so I found that really interesting and I sort of couldn't figure out why more companies weren't doing this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Noah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.